Good morning, children. It's Miss Catherine. Today, we are going to take a trip to the library. And today, I'm going to explain to you how you are going to discover the information here at the library relates to the Word of God. Why do people go to the library? People go to the library to gather extra knowledge, understanding, research, and learning in a peaceful, quiet environment. Now, children, you're probably wondering, how does the library relate to the Word of God? Well, I'm glad you asked, because when you go to a library, libraries that you go to, such as in your school or a local library, these places provide you books that would help you to understand certain topics or certain subjects. So how does the Word of God relate to the library information? Well, when you go to a certain area in the library, these books are categorized into their certain topics. So for example, you go to a certain area in the library, it talks about history, geography, there's romance, there's drama books, there's also poetry and musician books, and also there's also a section where it helps you with your literacy and numeracy as well too. Now, all these topics that Miss Catherine has just mentioned to you, can I happily explain and say to you that all those topics are actually are found all in the one book. And the one book that you can find all those subjects in is the Bible. Now, I am sure that there is many other topics and subjects that are also hidden in the Bible or possibly even be able to be revealed because there's so much more history and so much more information that is written in the Bible and it's just like going to the library. Every information that you need is all inside the Bible. Now children, I'm going to explain to you about the first subject that Miss Catherine explained to you earlier in this video, which is history. Now, how does history relate to the Word of God? Well, history means things that's happened in the past. Now, if you, if you have ever read the Bible, everything that's written in the Bible has happened in the past. But not only that, things that have happened in the Bible, things that have been spoken are in the present time. Things that have been spoken, such as prophecy, are for the future time. And don't forget that Jesus is the same living God as yesterday, today, and forever. Now, things that are also classified as history is things such as wars, battlefields, there's victory that people and cities have proclaimed, there's also deaths that's been happened, all these things that's happened in the Bible, that's, meant, that's part of history. Now, our second subject that Miss Catherine wants to talk to you about is geography. Now, from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end, there's so much information written about geography. Geography talks about location, landmarks, places, cities. It also talks about the environments, the society, the inhabitants, and the whole earth itself. Now, children, our third subject that Miss Catherine wants to talk to you about is going to be romance. You have someone like Adam and Eve. The reason why God created them is because God wanted them to produce fruits and to multiply and fill this earth. Not only for them, but also for the animals too. God created animals so then that way they could also fill this earth as well. So, of course, there's got to be some sort of romance put involved, which is the love and care, goodness and kindness towards it as well. Now, not only that, you have someone like Joseph and Mary. Now, Mary was chosen by God because Mary was a virgin. And because she was a virgin, that's how she was able to have Jesus inside her womb, inside her tummy. And Joseph, being the man, the head of the house, he was there to provide shelter, to love for her, to take care of her, and things like that. So because of that, their purpose here on earth was to also produce fruits and to fill this earth as well. But their main reason is because of Jesus Christ himself. Now, another one that I want to explain to you about is romance and drama. You have someone, for example, you have someone like David and Bathsheba and you've also got the story about Samson and Delilah and can I mention to you children that sometimes drama 
It is actually not from God. Drama cre creates chaos and cr creates division amongst families and people. So normally when drama comes involved into a certain situation, that's part of the enemy's work. Now the enemy plays a part of this because the enemy creates to try and plan plots, schemes, attacks, and evil works upon people. Because you know why? Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy people's lives. And drama is not from God. And that's why in the story, I've combined those two subjects together, romance and drama. All right, children, the next subject that Miss Catherine is going to talk about is subjects on musician and poetry. Now, in the book of Psalms, it talks about a man called King David. Now, he was a man who was able to play the harp, an instrument which is called the harp, and he played it so beautifully. Now, not only that, there is a verse that I want to explain to you about how the joy of the Lord is our strength. So no matter what the circumstances may be, whether good or bad times, doesn't matter what it may be, it is always good to give glory and honor and praise to Jesus because that's what King David did. Now, King David, he worshiped the Lord. He gave praise to the Lord. He gave, him, he gave to the Lord the first fruits of his lips. That's what David did. And there's many other stories written in the book of Psalms. Now, about poetry, the book of Proverbs is the best book to read when it comes about poems and things like that. So, a verse that I want to give to you that will help you to understand about this poetry side is that in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 18, verse 10, it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Now that just gives you an example of how the book of Proverbs is written. Now in the book of Psalms, there's a verse written in chapter 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. That's something that David had like expressed. That's something David had spoken, and also it's written in the Bible. Now, to add on more to that verse that Miss Catherine has just explained to you, written in the book of Psalms, chapter 28, verse 7. Now, when David had said those things, it made his circum it made him his circumstances a lot more smaller because when you magnify the Lord and you give glory to the Lord, it makes your circumstances down here and your praise and your worship becomes up here because your eyes, your heart and your mind is focused on the Lord. And that's something that can actually be a good example as to what myself and to what you could do in your everyday life as well. All right, children. Now, a subject that Miss Catherine is going to talk to you about next is a big, big subject that everyone loves to talk about. And it is something that you also learn when you're at school, whether you're in primary school or high school, and you can even find information about this subject in your library as well. So, the subject that Miss Catherine's going to talk to you about next is science. Now, just to help you to understand how does science relate to the Word of God, well, to keep it very short and simple and something very simplified, we are going to talk about the difference between light and darkness. Now, in the beginning, before anything was planned or fulfilled here on Earth, it was dark. This whole earth at one stage, it was full of darkness. But then God spoke a certain word and he said, let there be light. And it's written in the book of Genesis. So the moment God said, let there be light, there was light. He said it, he spoke it and it happened. 
So the moment there was light, it allowed the dark, whatever was here on earth, whatever was dark, when God said, let there be light, it shone a bright light over darkness. And because of that, that's a part of God's, it actually talks about, it kind of helps you to understand how great God's power is, especially like the authority that God had when, you know, when he spoke those words, let there be light and there was light. And the reason why there is darkness here on earth is because there's not enough light to overpower the darkness. Now, if there was enough of us, for example, right, you have Christian people. We believe that we are the light of this earth. We are the light of this world because that's what it's written in the book of Matthew. It says, be the light. And because God is asking us to be the light, we are supposed to shine our light bright. So then that way, those that are feeling down, those that are feel like that they're living in darkness we can actually go towards them and speak to them about the word all right so just to continue on so there's a verse that's written in the book of matthews all right so it talks about being the light us being christians we are we are to shine our light all right so in the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 16 it says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, if we continue on reading and praying every day, God's light will continue on shining on us. And because we have the light of Christ, therefore darkness will not be able to comprehend the light that is living in us. And the light that is with us and that, that lives inside of us is because of Jesus Christ. All right, so that just gives you a bit of an understanding about science, about the difference between light and darkness. All right, now the verse that I've just given to you, written in the book of Matthew, that just explains to you about the spiritual side of being the light. Now, the spiritual side about darkness, darkness is actually from the enemy. All right, so now the enemy allows this darkness to happen to certain people and it's because the enemy has gotten a stronghold of that particular person and it brings them down and allows them to um, experience certain situations and it controls their mindset in an evil thought and even even the way how they behave they the way how they behave is in like an evil wicked way and because of that, that's the spiritual side of darkness. And the enemy represents, the enemy is technically Satan, which is the darkness, and the light represents Jesus. Now, to continue on talking about science, science loves to talk about, about DNAs. Can I also mention that animals, every creature that you see here living here on earth, they have their own DNAs. Human beings, such as me and yourself and your mums and your dads and your aunties, your uncles, your teachers from schools, your friends, things like that, or your even siblings, brothers and sisters, or whoever you may know, we all have a unique DNA inside our body. And not only that, they also talk about how our fingerprint, each every single fingerprint that is on your finger is very unique and it is yours. And can I explain to you why? It is because God is the one that created you. And it's also written in the Bible. In, in the Old Testament, it talks about how God fearfully and wonderfully created you inside your mother's womb. And he knew you before you were even born. He knew your name. He even knows the numbers of the hairs that is on your head. That is how special you are in the sight of God. So when people ever want to talk to you about science, don't forget to mention to them that God is all, that God is the reason why you are here today because he is the one. He allowed you to be here on earth for a reason and for a purpose. And you are here because God wants you to do something here on earth for him. And it is also it also combines up to magnifying and giving glory and honor to the Lord. Something similar to just what, like what we spoke about within our other subject, we talk, which we spoke about King David. He magnified and gave glory and honor to the Lord. So don't forget, children, that all these subjects, 
that Miss Catherine had just explained to you about. These are all just very simplified examples and verses that are written in the Bible, just to help you to understand that that all these sub that all these subjects that you find that are all categorized in the library, they are all actually combined into the one book. Don't forget, it's the Bible. So next time someone wants to talk to you about history, geography, romance, drama, poetry, musician, as well as science, don't forget to mention to them that you know a book, one book that has all those subjects written in it. It's not separately, it's all combined into one book. One more thing I forgot to mention to you regarding about science, there's also another topic in science that talks about the atmosphere, the planet, the earth. It also talks about the environment and how we are able to breathe here on earth. It's because God allowed us to live here on earth because he has given us the breath of life. Not only that, God created all these plants. Now, the reason why there are lots of many, many trees here on earth, it's because it creates this sort of motion this atmosphere to allow the the fresh the fresh air to flow and it gives us the oxygen and the air that allows us to breathe can i say to you that it is because of jesus it is because of god as to why we have plants here on earth the seeds and how they grow it's because of god's creation at the end of the day it's all written in the book of genesis god created heaven and earth he created everything that is living here on earth. And that's what gives us the breath of life. All right, children. Now, to conclude off our lesson for today, I just want to mention to you that in the Bible, in the Bible, there's so many words that are written in the Bible, so many numbers that are written in the Bible. Can I explain to you? and tell you right now, children, that the things that are written in the Bible can actually help you with your, literal, with your literacy skills and your numeracy skills too. So if people want to talk about numbers, don't forget to tell them, hey, there's many numbers written in the Bible. Somebody want to talk about a particular word to you? Don't forget to mention to them, hey, I've seen that word written in the Bible. Can I also mention to you, children, that from the beginning of this video, to the end right now that everything that has come out of my mouth every single little word or big words that has just come out of my mouth can i mention to you right now that it is all written in the bible every single word is written in the bible isn't that amazing and it's funny because no one actually realizes or understands how everything is actually all written in the word of god now you might be thinking, Miss Catherine, what about children that, or what about children or families or friends that says swear words? I can also mention, can I also mention to you that that is also written in the Bible, all right? And I have a Bible verse that will back it up because in the book of Proverbs, which is part of poetry, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits so when you speak good things when you speak positive words you're speaking life either upon yourself you can speak life upon yourself or you can speak life upon other people when you're speaking negative words you can either speak that to yourself or you can speak negative words to someone else so that's the difference between life and death so life is pretty much good, positive words, and death is pretty much swear words, rude words, rude words, and other negative words that is also involved with that as well. All right, so I just want to mention to you that everything that we say is already written in the Word of God. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. I love you all. God bless you. And don't forget to stay tuned to see what topic Miss Catherine's going to talk to you about next. Bye.